Let's talk about politics and Sonny. Now, it's pretty obvious that plenty of shows make a habit of getting political, and unfortunately it tends to be pretty annoying, because it ends up feeling like you're being beaten over the head with the big dick of morality. Well, Sonny's always had a little bit more nuanced approach. They usually like to play both sides. Mac, why the hell did you sprint ahead of me, man? Oh, because I'm playing both sides. Basically, to avoid preaching to the viewers, they often just try to make a mockery of the whole atmosphere around politics, rather than attempting to sell the viewer their political opinions. And it's something I think deserves some appreciation, especially in times like this when we're all pretty tired of ham-fisted politics in our entertainment. So first, let's look at way back at the beginning of the series, Season 1, Episode 2. Upon the first watch of this, it seems like they're taking the side of abortion. At least I thought that. You know, Charlie's right, though. I mean, he should have at least had a say in the matter. Well, it's her body. It's her decision. No, I'm sorry. It's not just her decision. The man should get a vote. Okay, well, ultimately, it's her choice. It is not just her choice. Well, it's nobody's choice. It should be left up to God. Is he jo Is that... Are you joking? No, it's not a joke. You remember Genesis Book 2, Verse 3? And he breathed it into the nostrils of Adam on the first day, and it was good. Right in his nostrils, huh? But as the episode goes on, no one involved in the issue says anything but the most predictable rhetoric that we've all seen from both sides. Huh, bitch? Yeah, is that stupid enough for you? You know, that's the problem with you anti-abortionists. You cry about the sanctity of life, and then you wear a shirt like that. I'm not listening to you. Aren't you right-wingers all about the death penalty, too? Does that not involve killing somebody? Right, right, right. And you liberals are against killing murderers, but you're for killing innocent babies. Yeah, that's we like to kill babies. Because we love taking killing babies. way too seriously. Yeah. So just fill these out. Can we get your information in the mail? Thanks. Keep your laws... I like your T-shirt. Thanks. Man, where do I sign? All right, Megan, I'm finished. So it's more like they're displaying how little nuance there is in the public debate atmosphere of this stuff. Both sides just assume the other side is without morals. The show isn't picking a side here, it's mocking the process. And just to drive the point home, everything degenerates into egg throwing. Hey, there's a guy on the fence. Hey! Hey, they're coming after us! Oh, no, they're not coming after us. I'll show you what we do to them. I, I don't think that's a good idea. Hey, it's okay. These people deserve this. Looks like he deserves it. Maybe just one. Also, there's a joke here that someone's on the fence and they don't like that someone's on the fence. They don't like that someone can't pick a side. Get it? It's a metaphor. For politics. Well, I think we can dig a little deeper and find a few more examples of this. Let's move on to what's my favorite example of it is Sweet D Gets Audited. <laughs> Before we get into this one, let me lay down what's going on under the surface here. And it might be wrong, but it feels this way to me, and I'll explain that. This whole episode is a metaphor for political dissent, and the political process in general. Frank represents the government and big banks, Dennis represents the media, and Mac and Charlie represent the people. Hey, Frank, we need to talk. We don't want you making any major bar decisions alone anymore, because you're sleazy and we don't trust you. Yeah, we want to vote on things now, okay? We want a democracy. <laughs> Well, that ain't gonna work, because you guys get really emotional about everything. You'll start arguing about shit, and nothing will get done. We know we're emotional people, and we've discussed that. We think we have a solution. Mm. We're going to have a daily meeting where we will discuss all bar matters. Emotion will be suppressed, and reason will prevail. Reason will prevail! Oh. So when they try to bring up the main issue of money, Frank deflects. First order of business. Yeah. Let's talk about how Frank handles the money. Yes. Money, 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 money. Oh, money. Oh, 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 oh. I know we got to talk about the money, but there are other issues that are pressing too. Like what, dude? Like one that comes to mind is the dead dog. Initially, Mac and Charlie are on the same side, and Dennis helps mediate. Yeah, and we decided that Charlie was going to throw it in the trash. No, you decided that. We never got a vote. If Mac and I got to vote on that, we would have voted to, like, you know, have a proper dog burial. That's a waste of time and resources. Oh, okay, well, hold on a second there, Frank. Let's put our new process into action. I think the guys should have an opportunity to state their case in a rational and unemotional way. 
Guys, you have the floor. And so here we get to the part. If you weren't sold on the idea that Mac and Charlie represent the people, I think this is the first hint of that. God damn it! I don't know how to express myself unless through anger and personal attack. I'm getting very upset because I'm not saying right. I want a dog funeral! Which is followed by the first hint that Dennis is the media. Guys, calm down. I'm going to step in here and I'm going to speak for you for a moment, if if I may. Then when that's solved, they try to bring up the money again. And Frank deflects again. Next issue. Let's talk about the money. Money! Okay. Oh, money. yes, we're going to talk about the money, but we have a list of things on the docket here that we got to check off, and if we're going to do it right, we're going to do it right, and the next thing on the list is limes, and how we slice them, thick or thin. Okay, let's talk about the limes, we'll keep guys. We'll emotion out of it. Reason will prevail. Reason, Reason will, will prevail. prevail! Okay, I think the limes should be cut a bit thinner. What? Wait. Thin limes? Where have I heard this before? That's pretty thin. That might be too thin. So which is it, Dennis? Are the limes too thin or too thick? You disgust me. Anyway, watch how fast it degenerates into screaming and emotion. What the hell? Thin limes? People will choke! People will die! Okay, Charlie, 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 take emotion out of it. Charlie's got a point! One of the cornerstones of Patty's pub is thick limes! Yeah, don't tell me what's going on! I'm gonna put my thumb through your eye, you little bitch! After this, they throw in a little bit about backroom political dealings. Hmm, a vote for thin limes would get me out of your apartment. Uh, better yet, a vote for thick limes. I'll throw myself full force into this little baby caper of yours. I don't need your help. Look, D, you need our help. We need your help. Let's work something out here. This leads them to organize their own party, further pushing the idea that this is indeed a political metaphor. At the very least, maybe I got some other stuff wrong, but it's definitely a political metaphor. It has been decided. We are now the pickle party. <laughs> and D has joined us. We are going to vote for pickles in the bar instead of limes. What are you talking about? It doesn't matter. The point is, our three votes will always beat your two. We win, dude. We're the winners, okay? Give me a beer with a pickle in it. This is when the idea that Dennis is the media really starts to play itself out more. Okay, well, the next issue on our list should be a pretty easy one for the pickle party to uh, to agree on. A crucifix in the bar. Ah, you are right. This is an easy one. Why wouldn't we have a crucifix in the bar? Because we're a bar. Irish Catholic bar, and therefore a giant wooden crucifix is a celebration of our heritage. Giant? Yeah. How big of a crucifix do you want? Big. Now Dennis, the media, divides the people, Mac and Charlie, and then decides to start colluding with Frank to keep Charlie and Mac distracted. Did you see that, Frank? I saw that. I just played them like a fiddle. A goddamn fiddle. What do you want? I want in on the action. Whatever it is that you got going on around here, I want a piece of it, okay? You see, Frank, you might not know this, but you need me. People don't trust you, Frank. You're a piece of shit. And you're ugly. And you ooze sleaze. And you're very, very ugly. All right, I'm gonna make you my puppet. Right here. Look, I've been cooking the books in the bar for years. And look at that. Frank's even been cooking the books. Which, I mean, isn't out of character for him, but still. And then we get back to more distractions and arguments perpetuated by Dennis. Sounds like you guys came to a compromise. That's great. We crossed the crucifix issue off the list. Uh, one quick question before I do, though. How bloody is this guy going to be? Not bloody. <laughs> Very at- bloody. What? No, he's got to be drenched in blood. I mean, covered in blood. He needs to oh be ravaged. Oh, my God, dude. Me. It's bad enough I'm going to let you put the stupid cross up in the first place. Stupid gonna- cross, you son of a bitch! I knew it! Later, Dennis even starts doing damage control and Frank... Let's a little bit too much info slip. DeAndre, did you tell the IRS you worked here? Of course I did. We can't have the IRS looking around our books. Why? What's wrong with our books? Let me step in here. Um, I think what you're trying to say is that the IRS poking around our bar business is no good for anyone. It's, it, look, it's going to be best for all of us to get the IRS off of D's back. And then, of course, when Mac and Charlie figure out that Frank and Dennis have been colluding to keep them distracted, it all comes crumbling down. Dude, something stinks. I know. I know. Have you noticed that all we wanted to do was talk about our money? Right. And then we kept getting pushed into talking about other things. And then when we'd leave, Frank and Dennis became all buddy-buddy. Yeah, there were a lot of backroom dealings going on in here, you know? What the hell, dude? See, now I'm getting pissed off, you know? Because I think those two are conspiring against us. Let's go out there and expose these sons of bitches for who they are. This is what you get when you mess with the pickle party. Pickle party? Prepare for your hearts to turn to stone! Now let's move on to what I consider to be the most obvious example of politics in Sunny, and also the most obvious example of how they like to handle political stuff on Sunny. Right at the start of this episode, we get a very direct example of how Sunny likes to portray the media. 
crime in this city is out of control. Mm. Thank God I went down to Gunther's Guns and picked up a spare. I don't think one would have done it. I'm going to go out and buy some more. Okay. And I think you should too. Don't be a victim. It's time to fight back. So anyway, after Frank whips them up into a frenzy and they realize they have the exact opposite opinions on the matter, they split up and try to prove the other side wrong. If you've seen the episode, you already know that they basically swap sides by the end. Which is the show's way of saying that neither side is infallible. What's even better is that Dee and Dennis end up wanting more guns because they personally can't get them. And Mac and Charlie end up wanting less guns because they're too scared of everybody being violent. So throughout the whole episode, the show never actually argues which side is correct. And even the characters come to their final opinions for very shallow and one-dimensional reasons on both sides. I have my opinions about gun control, and you probably have your own. And the guys that make this show know that. They aren't insulting your intelligence with a hollow story about people coming to terms with the moral solution to the gun problem or some bullshit like that. Instead, it's all one big gag about the conversation surrounding it. I don't think I really need to provide examples for what I'm talking about with this episode, though. They do a pretty straightforward job of it here. And I'm willing to bet plenty of you picked up what this episode was putting down. But I did find it neat that they took the time to make sure the driver's licenses that Dennis and Dehan Gunther were Pennsylvania IDs. You know, just if you're interested, that's pretty neat. I guess I'll just conclude with this clip because it makes me so happy and wraps up what these guys think about the media. And thanks for watching, my dudes. Do you know that 90% of your water is 100% toxins? Who knows what the other 10% is? It's probably far worse. It's really worse. Okay, so the video's actually been basically done for a while now, but I couldn't decide what to do with season 12 because it's relevant to what this video is about, but it's so fucking on the nose that I kind of just decided to exclude it for now. Plus, I haven't watched it as many times as the other season. So that's why there's no season 12 in there, even though you would expect it because it's really relevant. But it's just too on the nose.